Shindobre YouTube, welcome back to my channel. My name is Atticus Schaefer, and given that this is the first video of 2024, I want to wish each and every one of you a very happy new year. I hope that your new year has started well, and that you are filled with nothing but joy and peace and productivity in this coming year. I hope it's a good year for you all. Anyways, cool people, welcome back. Uh, it has been a long time coming, but I am finally releasing to you all today the next installment of my behind the scenes series of videos for my TV show The Middle and more specifically I'm taking you all as I mentioned in my Christmas video that I uploaded at the end of last year. I am taking you all on a journey with me as we get to go down nostalgia lane and uh, be able to see what it was like for all of us on set as we were filming the final season of The Middle, season nine. Uh, before we get too far into the video though, I do wanna do just a couple quick housekeeping things. Please subscribe to my channel. Uh, the more subscriptions that I have, the more it will help the algorithm push this video out to others who are fans of film history TV history, fans of the show The Middle, fans of Warner Brothers or Warner Brothers Ranch. This will get out to all of the awesome people that this video is intended for. So if you subscribe to my channel, that will help me to be able to do that. Also, it will help you to be able to be notified each time I upload one of these videos or any video on my channel. Speaking of helping me out with the algorithm, please, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. That also tells the YouTube algorithm, hey, push this video through to other like minded people. I hope you will do that. It will help me out greatly. Also, please check the description box, bar, doodad, whatever YouTube calls it now. Beneath this video, there's going to be a ton of links down there for you that I really want you to be able to see and you can click on. Um, it will take you to links to my Twitch channel if you want to be able to interact with me live and in a, uh, a setting that kind of revolves around gaming. Um, also, the link to Rachel, my editor, her YouTube channel, which is absolutely brilliant and she has just recently done uh, an amazing series of spooky games that she's been playing. Please subscribe to her channel as well. Check her out. Give her lots of support because she helps me a ton and makes these amazing videos what they are. And also please check out my cameo page down below if you or a loved one or a friend or a relative or even yourself if you want to have a personal video shout out from me for whatever occasion, birthday, anniversary, Valentine's Day is coming up. Please go ahead and book me on cameo. It helps support me and the work that I do with my production company as well as creative endeavors. So please support me through there. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and check out some more photos and video clips hearkening all the way back to 2017 and with it, the stories that follow. This episode specifically is going to be pretty much everything that was entailed for us, the main cast, leading up to a season filming the show. Now I do have a, I do have some humorous stories to go along with this too. To kind of preface everything, what we would normally do leading up to filming the season of a show, but then especially after we would conclude filming the season of the show, is we would do a lot of different publicity. Um, different shows have different amounts of publicity that they do per the budget set to them and given to them by the producing studio as well as the distributing network or platform and so that would be something that would change show to show. For us, you know, we did most of our publicity kind of during filming and then when we would conclude filming a season every year I had the pleasure of being able to go to New York to kind of do a long uh, a gambit of different talk shows and you know Good Morning America, The View, things like that. Um, but then also we would do different things throughout the year like do radio tours. I, I know that there was multiple years that I would do radio tours where I'd be up, you know, 3 a.m. and pretty much everywhere across the country I'd have my cup of coffee and maybe a, a bread product for some breakfast that I would scarf in between shows and I would just be sitting on the phone being led by a moderator uh, who was working with me to each one of the different stations or shows that were going on throughout the country on that particular day publicizing different episodes of the show most often finales. Um, and then of course too I have a I have a resume. For those of you, by the way, who are curious as to see my resume, if you go to a website called imdb.com, it stands for the Internet Movie Data ba uh, Database. The Internet Movie Database. Um, I think that's what it stands for. Rachel, cut this out. 
I encourage you to go to a website called imdb.com. Rachel will put it here. Um, and uh, search my name on that website and it will actually show you my resume. So I know that many people will come into Twitch streams or uh, comment on the YouTube videos and ask, hey, what are you doing now? And of course that question is not really a straightforward answer. However, if you want to see what else I've been in besides what you might know me from, go ahead and check that out. But th as you can see on there, when you do go on there, I've done many different talk shows in my life. So again, publicity was a big thing regarding the show and something that I had the pleasure being able to take part in very often, which I loved. I love being able to talk about my work and my show, and it's kind of everything that I get to share with you all here on YouTube, but even more so because I get to kind of dive into more specific stories, not just, you know, things pertaining to an episode specifically. Um, but anyway, beginning our season nine journey here, I am going to start with kind of a humorous story. Um, amongst my friends, I kind of have come to speak on the show and Ending as I, I, I title it, they broke up with me via text. We did not know if we were going to be renewed for a new season of the show, season to season. So, I mean, we would end uh, a, a season and then we would just most often not know if we were going to be coming back until maybe a month or so later, and then we would get the official call from the studio, the network, hey, you're picked up and let's have you carry on making middles and then and then later on when we when we got toward the end we were n more knowing of hey there's going to be another season so 2017 was a very different year as i mentioned in the christmas episode of this series that i'm doing for you all our filming schedule was always august to march of the following year so season nine our final season was august 2017 through to march of 2018 and we would have a couple of hiatus weeks interspersed in that schedule but it was an eight months eight month shooting schedule. This year, because we were reaching 200 episodes, which is huge, reaching 100 episodes in a sitcom is huge. There are very few shows that have done that in TV history. Even fewer have reached and surpassed 200 episodes for a sitcom. So we knew that that was going to be the achievement of season nine. And so we were told, I was told, that there was going to be a big publicity bash going on for ABC just before we began filming the show. And so this was sometime in July of 2017. Wow, this is really cool. You know, we get to talk about this. This is a huge achievement. I'm very excited about this. You know, I, I, I uh, creatively, it's exciting and, and we're making history. And so I thought that was the reason, you know, that's the reason for all this publicity and these exciting things. And the day that we were going to go to this event, which had a bunch of different reporters, uh, there was a lot of exclusive interviews that each of the castmates did with different people, but there was also a bunch of other ABC shows there as well. This was a big, you know, start of the season ABC television publicity event. It was, it was almost like a big party, but a working party. I'm literally getting changed to get picked up by the driver to go down to like Beverly Hill. It was, I think it was Santa Monica because it was in a big hotel that was off of Wilshire Boulevard. A very nice hotel, probably very expensive too. <laughs> Before we go there, I'm getting changed to do this publicity event and I'm a part of a group text of everyone. It, me and Patty and Eileen and Deanne and Charlie Eden and Neil. And I get this text and it was Eileen going, Hey, so by the way, everyone, I know that we're all getting ready for this publicity event today. Just so you're aware, uh, it's most likely going to come up that we've decided that this is going to be the last season of the show. You all know because of the meeting that we had together that we've decided that season nine is going to be the end. And there's probably going to be a lot of talk with that. So just be aware and think ahead of what answers you want to give. Blah, 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 blah. It was a little bit more authoritarian than how I'm presenting it because, I mean, it, anyway. So yeah, I read that text and I, I responded with I'm sorry season nine is the last season of the show that's new to me and they were like oh yeah <laughs> cool yeah that was in my head literally like two hours before I was supposed to talk about it huzzah the this is sometimes how the industry goes Anyway, I show up to this really nice hotel publicity event thing, and that's what we're going to start with uh, today. And this is actually really cool. So now we're going to go back in time and see 
what it was like. Okay, so just like with the Christmas episode, I'm really hoping to achieve a feel uh, that's like you all are hanging out with me and we get to watch um, kind of like a photo reel, video reel together and kind of have it be like a big family reunion thing. So that's what I'm doing here today. I'm sitting here in front of my, my Mac, uh, my edit, which is my editing computer. And, uh, and I'm, I have on my screen the footage for this particular episode, and, and you all will be seeing it as I get to speak on this. So this is particularly special. Anytime there was a big publicity event at something like this, I mean, they really went all out. There was spreads of awesome food and, and, and beverages and snacks. And what was really cool about this, this specific event, it was almost like one giant green room where instead of everybody being isolated and sectioned off in these different areas. We kind of each had our own little table, but we were in a big common area. And so we could see other actors and creatives and people from all these other different shows that were there and being filmed and being publicized during this particular era of time for television and, and specifically for ABC. And this was really really cool because I got to meet again, see again, and speak with again my very first scene partner ever. And it is the one and only Jason Ritter. This was so particularly cool. Um, I had not seen Jason in, let's, well, I mean, we're talking 12, 13 years at this point. For those of you who don't know, my story of how I got into the industry, it was not anything planned. It was literally just my, my mom thought that I had a cute voice. She thought that I had some talent and she thought I would be a really cute or a really cool uh, cartoon character or a book on tape reader. And there's more details to the story than what I'm letting on. And I, and I, I've spoken on it a number of different times in different interviews and things like that. So for the sake of brevity, I'm condensing this story, but it, it, it hurts it a little bit. The long and the short of it is I was able to meet with a manager. The manager signed me on, but the manager said, hey, I don't want to just hire you on for voiceover. I'd love to see what you can do theatrically in front of a camera as well. And so my mom and I had said, yes, this would be fun. Let's try it, see what happens. Maybe I can make money for college if it ends up working out. You know, we don't know, but let's, let's go on an adventure together and see what happens. I was seven at the time. A month after I signed on with her, her daughter slash assistant accidentally sent me on an audition for a CBS show called The Class. And it was directed by uh, James Burroughs. It was a Warner Brothers project. And sure enough, I booked it. And that's like an unheard of thing to do. I just went, I didn't know that it was an accident. I, I thought this was something meant for me and I wanted to just have fun with it and do the best that I could. I ran my lines with my mom. I went to the audition and, and I booked it. And uh, things snowballed from there after that point for me career-wise. But when I booked it, my scene partner, the other character in the scene, was played by Jason Ritter. So he was the first actor I ever got to meet and work with. And he had the most beautiful, positive energy seeing me again. Uh, it, w it was just like being able to meet, you know, your family again. To be able to see him again and, and have us kind of talk about, you know, all of us ended up where we were supposed to, hearing about what he was doing career-wise, his show that he was working on at the time. It was such an amazing experience. It, it was it was so cool, and very rarely do occasions like that happen, and to have them happen, especially in this industry, is a very special occurrence. So it was so cool to be able to see Jason again and, and um, be able to catch up with him and obviously me being significantly older than when I last saw him he could see who I was you know as an adult at that point or a young adult rather so very very special treat now this was really cool too so the, these next series of photos are everything that we were able to do before we did our big panel at the end of the day so what was going on is there was like I mentioned earlier there was a lot of really exclusive little interviews with different uh, publicity outlets magazines TV shows websites, you know, whatever. And um, what ended up happening, and, and this has happened a lot through the history of the show, is unless you are one of the specific actors that a show or an interview requests, if it's something that's for the show as a whole, then what often ended up happening, because there was five of us, is we ended up all getting paired off in different sort of teams with different publicity events that we would do. Um, I remember that several years prior to these publicity events, um, we did a, like, a big European tour. It was very early in the show. I think it was after season one or season two that we did this. We did a Europe 
European tour at once, and I had the same kind of like battle buddy publicity partner as I did now. Uh, but as you can see here, for this day in particular, my, my publicity battle buddy, as it were, ended up being Neil. Neil and I could actually do publicity very well together. Uh, we jived very well. We, we both sort of like to tell stories. Me, me especially so. And uh, he was kind of really good about playing off of that. And it ended up for a fun dynamic. Also, too, we're like complete opposite ends of the height spectrum. And that was kind of a joke that we had between ourselves. Like, hmm, of course, we, we get paired together because we're the outliers, you know. We spent our day together uh, hanging out and, and talking. And at this particular point here, uh, this was our first time seeing each other all summer. I don't believe that we had even done the table read for the show yet. Uh, so this was our first time seeing each other since the previous season ended. And you can see he's... He's having a coke. We're waiting for our turn to run our gambit of publicity events. And uh, we were just catching up on different things. And then as the as the photos continue on here, let's see what this next one is. Yes, here's us in the middle of doing... Shut up. It's not a pun. Here's us in the middle of doing a, uh, an interview. We were kind of just sharing our experiences with this particular interviewer. And you can see that the interview sections are actually very small. It's literally like a, a little dressing room that they make with black curtains and lights. And that's how it would be. I mean, even when I did a Frankenweenie and I did a big publicity weekend uh, leading up to the release of that movie. Um, it was the same basic concept. We were down in Disneyland in, in a couple of the different hotels that are down in Disneyland and they just took over some meeting rooms that the hotels had and then sectioned them off like this and that's how you do publicity. <laughs> you see it on TV in the behind the scenes extras and it looks very fancy and whatever. Most of the time that's a green screen or a blackout curtain like this. Uh, but anyway, this was, a uh, this was really cool. I, I could not tell you for the life of me who these interviewees were. That's probably bad. But yeah, here's another one of us sitting on a red couch. This one is a little bit more fancy. They painted the backdrop to look like it was like a shiplap with white hyper modern style. You can see different camera equipment there too, like the boom for the sound, the lighting, all the cables and the things that lead to the cameras and everything like that. So that was a really interesting occurrence. My mom is the one who took all these photos, by the way. And gosh, every time, every time I look at them, I'm just like, yo, that's, she did good. She did really good. Here's another big one. Um, this was actually outside on a patio, but they made it look like an interior. Uh, Cause I mean, obviously you want to use up as much room and real estate as you can, get as many interviewers in as possible, and not have sound conflicts. So this was us doing another interview outside, actually. Why they have operation in evidence on the opposing table, I have no clue. I have no memory of that. They have a popcorn machine, too, but there was no popcorn in it. We both felt very, uh, jilted. But yeah, anyway, so that was that. This is kind of the run of different publicity events. Here's one, too, where, um, we were paired they wanted all the kids together, so they kind of ripped me away from Neil, and then Charlie Eden and I did an interview and uh, did a couple publicity like spots for ABC, I believe is what it was. So that was another interesting occurrence. So this was really funny. This was really cool. Like I mentioned, I'm still grieving. Oh, it's the last season. Okay, cool. How do I compose myself? And um, this was our little powwow before we did the big panel, which had like a hundred different reporters and people uh, wanting to ask questions about the show and everything like that. And this was one of those things where it was like, you better get on the same page as us. <laughs> this is the official narrative. You know, that kind of thing. I'm, I'm teasing partially. This is where, you know, the representative from ABC, the representative from Warner, Warner Brothers, and then Eileen and Dan and all of us, we could all get together and be like, yeah, okay, so this is what we're gonna say, okay? Don't deviate from it. And uh, it was just really interesting for me because I, I'm sitting there the whole time listening, and, and again, they keep bringing up about some meeting that I was not privy to, apparently, and they were they made the decision to end the show, and I was like, yeah, okay, but but hey, I, I, I think we could go another season. Like, there's still time to change it if you want to. But I, I got outvoted, apparently. So, go figure. But anyway, yeah, this was our little powwow. All right, get ready. We're gonna go on a panel. And then it was time for the panel. Now this was really cool. This was the first <clears throat> of emotion uh, that I felt as well as my mom when we were there. And again, this, this picture was taken by my mom who was in the audience. So we were in the big ballroom at this particular hotel that um, 
we did this big panel in front of. And what was really, really cool and really sweet is that the editors at ABC, they put together a farewell season publicity reel that that could be played for everybody there, for all of the reporters. And then I think that eventually went online for all of you to see. And I, and I think it was also even a trailer on ABC to publicize the farewell season of the show. And it was so heartwarming and nice. And so I actually, my mom was able to record it as a, as a viewer uh, with her, with her phone. And, um, and I, I have it here for you to watch. So just imagine yourself, your reporter, your even better, one of us who just found out that the show is ending and this is what they played to kind of honor us. Thank you, honey. Eat your pancake. It's so frozen. The lid in the last longer. And then, boom, we were able to successfully do the panel. Uh, it was a great time. And, you know, we really, we thus began our journey of starting season one. So at this particular point in time, now we flash forward a couple weeks. The initial publicity is done and with all those interviews and that big day. And now we're getting into getting closer to production. At this particular point, we had done our first table read. I don't know if I specified this too heavily. I am going to speak more on this in subsequent videos. But the table read for the episode is where the writers, the producers, the studio, the network, and the actors can all come together, read the the script aloud and the director I don't know if I said that read the script aloud and then be able to um, hear what the what the jokes what the story sounds like for a particular episode and what we would do is we would do the table read usually a week in advance of shooting that particular episode and I think that was the same with this uh, what ended up happening is we were able to go do the table read and then sh right after that we would do our wardrobe fitting has anybody changed has anybody gained weight has anybody lost weight you know did a size change what's more comfortable blah 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 that would be one day and then later on in this same week what we ended up doing and this was 
true for every year of the show. We would do a publicity photo shoot um, where we could get updated photos that the network, that the studio, and that we as actors could use kind of like headshots and publicity photos, um, whether that be sending them out to people who wanted autographs or putting it out online, uh, putting it up for commercials, whatever it might be, posters even, um, if we wanted to be able to have some sort of publicity or advertisement for everyone to see and publicize the season. We did that every year. And what you're seeing here is at one of those photo shoots, uh, this is what one of those photo shoots would look like. So we actually had our own makeup people from the show uh, who were there to do us up, make us consistent with the characters and how they look like on camera when being filmed. And this is Heather. She was the makeup artist who most often did my makeup. And it was her and Tyson. Tyson was the head of the makeup department and they would be the ones doing it. So she's gussying me up, making me look pretty, hiding all of my pubescent acne that I was struggling with at the time. And that was kind of a phase one of gearing up for a publicity shoot. And now here we are. A lot of times what would end up happening is we would come together and they would do photos of each character individually. And then because the show was about the family, they would have all of us together in different familial settings uh, where we could do stuff. Earlier seasons, it was really real. Like it would be us in the station wagon or sitting down at a table and eating dinner. <laughs> Um, or sitting on a couch in front of like a TV. I remember one time we, uh, we did that and I think three of us ended up with migraines because of the, the front light at the time to emulate the TV. But thankfully such was not the case with this year. Um, it was very kind of getting into that modern feel where it was very stark and there wasn't a lot of stuff around and then they could drop the images into really whatever background they wanted. And uh, that's what you're seeing here. You're seeing Patty. It's her turn. Um, Charlie, Eden, and Neil are kind of in the wings getting ready to go. And then here's a bunch of crewmates and photographers that are standing around. I think that's me. It is. That's the back of my head down low. <laughs> uh, if you want to find me in a photo, look down. Don't look up. Uh, here's another photo. We've got wardrobe uh, doing last looks. We have a photographer who's checking his lighting. And this was at a Coyote studio down in Burbank. Yeah, the very south end of Burbank. So yes, there's us. That's what a that's what a photo shoot set looks like. Um, and then here they're getting ready for me to do my series of photos. And I had a, a few different ones. This was one that was just me by myself. And what the guy is explaining to me is that the the shtick for these photos is you're walking away and waving. So we're having you be actually moving where you're walking like you're walking away from the camera and then waving and he's explaining that to me. And then uh, now what we're gonna see here is everybody doing it. So they had us do it individually and then they brought everybody up onto the, the set and had us do the same thing. And uh, you know, it's 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 cool. It's acting, but it's a still, you know, it's like modeling. That's what modeling is. And uh, that's what we got to do this day, which was really cool. Um, and again, different photos, like you can see the couch in evidence there. Um, that they did end up bringing the couch on to the set at one point. And then you can see us listening to what they were instructing us for the photos. And then here's an actual monitor of the photos uh, where you're seeing this is what it ended up looking like where it was all of us together waving goodbye. Uh, in this particular one. And then here's one of us sitting on the couch that they brought up and then they're having us uh, kind of be active in that regard. Now they change scenes and then here's another one where they put us in different wardrobe. It's a different backdrop and a different look. And again, it's so that way the companies can have options as to what they want to showcase and, um, and, and put out for different settings. This one was really sweet. It was like all of us in a big group hug. And then, and then here's me doing some single shots on that specific set as well. And you can see there different looks. They would have us look down the pipe of the camera, off different directions. You know, he would, the, the camera guy would be feeding us different emotions or we would come up with different emotions for the characters ourselves and try to find those you know, active shots where it's not just a hammy, hello, smile picture, smile for grandma picture, but it's in character, which is the point of these things. And then as you can see there, the, the camera guy getting all, 
intimate with me, you know, different different lens sizes and framing and all that cool stuff. The other cool thing that I really liked about publicity shoots, and this is something that I like, especially now because I have more refined taste, is that they would let us choose music that we wanted to listen to as we get our pictures taken. And that's a really true thing. Uh, I'm sure that many of you, and tell me this in the comments section, do you feel different emotion as you listen to different songs and different music groups and, and uh, different albums, things like that, genres of music? I am one of those people. I love music. Music is super incredibly important to me. I love it. I love listening to my music. It makes me feel calm or energized or happy or help me navigate sadness and all the other stuff. You know, I'm, I'm real and, and it's something that I do. That works. And so thankfully, what I love nowadays is that someone can just plug in their phone or a laptop, hook it up to a speaker and be able to, uh, to play it. And they would always let us choose our music that we wanted to hear. And Patty and Neil would listen to a lot of 70s music. For me, I love to listen to my rock music. And I'm listening here to a little bit of Thousand Foot Crutch. I'm going to have Rachel blip in just a little bit of it as you get to see this next clip and then and then retract again so that way YouTube doesn't smack me in the back of the head and say demonetized but take a listen to this I'm listening to the thousand foot crutch and this is me doing the uh the walkabout where I'm walking uh, opposing sides of the of this stage here in and doing the wave <laughs> And then they're shouting a bunch of stuff at me. <laughs> Walk here. No, don't do that. Yeah, do that. That's great. Look at action. And now he's telling me change directions. Go this way. And then there's like 15, 16, 20 other people talking in the background too. These photo shoots can get very chaotic. And then here's a couple pictures, or a picture at least, of the result of that. And this is what it would look like on the monitor and what they were trying to capture with me going back and forth like that. And then here's a couple more of me just staying stationary, emoting, reacting, you know, speaking on those different things. And again, what they look like on a monitor is an actual photo. So the other really cool thing that we were able to do this year, because there was a lot of publicity for this, this particular season of the show, this was the year that the Lego Batman movie was able to come out. And of course, prior to this, the Lego movie had come out and Warner Brothers said, hey, you know, we can do this big Lego thing and, and make movies and kind of take the stop motion animation world with Legos and expound upon it on a more broad scale. And that was really cool. So we filmed at the Warner Brothers Ranch in Burbank. But literally two miles away, up the street from us, was the main Warner Brothers studio lot. And it was on that lot that they had a lot of things like studio tours. They filmed a lot of different projects on that lot and, and cycling so, whether it be movies or TV. But what ended up happening, all of the current Warner Brothers production shows were able to have their poster on the Warner Brothers Ranch lot. And what's particularly special is actually, speaking back to my very first job ever, which was called The Class, I filmed my very first job ever on the Warner Brothers studio. It was an incredible experience. It was so surreal when I did my very first job. And this is the one I worked with Jason Ritter on. And like I said, my very first director was James Burroughs. And my mom, and this is what's so cool about having, like, your your mom, who is your best friend, who's also, like, your constant companion in the adventure of the industry, is we would see different things together and experience different things together, which made it all the more special. But then we could talk about those things and, hey, what am I feeling? What am I thinking? Am I envisioning something? Whatever. When I left the class, which was just one week, one week of work, it was a guest star character, my mom turned to me because we had kept seeing the posters as we would go into and leave the studio every day of that week. Mom said, I don't know what it's going to be, but I just had a vision of you on a poster for a show on this exact wall. And I was like, wow, that's incredible. And I believed her, but there was no way of knowing what that would be. And we just talked about it that day 
And then that was it. And years later, when the show got picked up, and after we had been on the air for a couple seasons, Warner Brothers gifted our show with being able to have our show's poster on the wall of Warner Brothers. And uh, you're going to see it right now. There it is. This was our poster that was on the exact wall where my mom said, I just had a vision of you being on that wall for the poster. And it came to pass. And so for years, we were able to have our show, our show's, our show's poster, up on the walls of Warner Brothers Studios, which was like just, it felt like such an amazing feat and accomplishment, especially for that show. It was such a blessing for all of us. Uh, we were thrilled by it. But what ended up happening is this season, in season nine, when the Lego Batman movie was coming out, as a means of kind of having solidarity for the project, and also it was a publicity event for the project, but also for all of our shows, what Warner Brothers did is they actually went in and made an exact replica of all of the posters that were on the wall of Warner Brothers Studios that year and put them into Lego form. And so that's what they did. And you're gonna see right here in this photo, you can see it behind me. I'm doing an, I think that's Entertainment Tonight. I'm doing an interview with them, speaking with them about it, but you can see in the background there is the Lego version of the middle poster, which is seriously awesome. They did such an amazing job. And then uh, here's me with Lego Batman. You can see, oh, behind me too, there is was a Big Bang Theory and the Flash in Lego form. And then now here, here is an actual file of the middle Lego poster. As a Lego nerd, I grew up as a huge Lego nerd and I would do like stop motion animation with my Legos and watch animations on YouTube and stuff like that. This was a really cool treat. I've been Legoized. <laughs> and then of course too, um, beyond that, we had a couple other publicity events that we were able to do. And remember how I was talking about we would have kind of publicity battle buddies. Uh, this particular morning was actually a news program tour, a TV tour. ABC had set up with Patty and I, and uh, we were paired together for these particular events. And so we went to a studio in Burbank, a few streets away from where we would film the show. Patty and I got gussied up, and then we were able to do publicity together, which was a lot of fun. And behind us, you can see an example of one of the photos that we got from the photo shoot that I was just talking about earlier. And this is a prime example of what they would use it for as an intercut and as a backdrop uh, for being able to speak on the show and publicize the show and really any other thing that you want to do with photos like that. So here we are, here's the studio. We're in the middle of an interview now. You can see the camera per uh, people out there, the green screen behind us and everybody sort of getting set up and ready and cutting in between the, the, the different shots for us. Uh, here's a monitor of the different things that are being played. So like you can see the different cameras, the the what they would intercut with. Also too here, it says cam three. That's like some B-roll from an episode of the show that we had just filmed. And so that's another arena of depths to publicity, right? And and they're, they are their own productions for other productions, which was really cool. And then again, here's a tight shot of one of those publicity photos that we had. And then uh, mom being proud mom, she took a picture of me. And boom, there you have it. The next installment of the middle behind the scenes episodes. Everything that you just saw was all just the lead up to filming the last season of the show. And uh, as you can see, it was very comprehensive. There's stories for all, everything. And believe me, I have many, many more. Uh, the next installment of this series of videos, we are actually gonna be back on the set and being able to explore what it was like to actually film the last season of the show. And guys, my friends, there's gonna be a lot of installments to this series of videos. There's, there's, I have a ton of stories. I've gone, it's taken me all this time just to be able to go through the footage to pick out what it is that I want to share with you all. And it, I wanted to make it as comprehensive as possible. So again, we have a dedicated episode just for leading up to the season. And now in subsequent videos, it's going to be us actually on the set and filming the next season, this season, the rest of the season. So everyone, I hope you will come back. Please do. Um, and again, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already, and share this video everywhere. Every social media page that you have, 
have Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, doesn't matter. Share this everywhere because I really want to be able to have the opportunity to tell these stories and give you all this behind the scenes look as to what it was like to film this TV show that I know for many of you, you grew up watching as you, as I got to grow up doing the show. And so I really want us to all be able to experience this nostalgia together. For those of you who love TV or film history, I know that this is a treat for you as well. I am loving and have loved all of the different comments that every one of you have been able to put on my previous two behind the scenes videos. I want that to keep going. I hope you all will be able to enjoy this video and the videos to come. So please stay tuned. Thank you all for tuning in today. And like I said at the beginning, check the description bar, box, whatever it is below. Hit all of those links. I know that somehow, some way, it's going to be something that you'll be interested in. So definitely check it out. Everyone, I will see you in the next video. Dovidzenia.